Hey friends, uh, before we start this uh, video interview that I'm doing, I want to introduce you to my daughter, Allison, who is the one who helps me put these videos together, and I certainly couldn't do this kind of content without her. Uh, she also helps with, uh, with my website, um, and so she's a real blessing. Um, and you see, we're here working on a video that uh, we have an interview with uh, Sergey, who's our RV14 builder. And before we get into it, I wanted to uh, just explain that uh, uh, we have some audio issues with this one. I, I still think it's very much worth watching, um, and we've really worked at it and tried to do the best we, uh, we can with it. We have captioned it as best we can, but uh, uh, I use a uh, DJI Osmo, which I control from my iPad, so you're always wondering, uh, if you watch these videos, why I'm carrying an iPad. It's really because I'm just controlling the, uh, the camera from that. And um, the Osmo has four microphones around the outside of it. And uh, some of the guys were uh, not very far away on the other side of the camera. And so as Sergey was talking, um, not at the camera, but towards me next to him, um, you can hear some of the guys in the background. So I apologize for, for the, uh, the difficulty with the, uh, the audio in advance, but uh, still think the video's uh, worth watching and uh, getting to know Sergey a little bit and some info on his uh, RV14. So again, sorry for the audio quality. We've done the best we can to, uh, to clean it up and we do have captions there. So enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Hi friends, this is Doug Goodrich with Custom Aircraft Builders. And I'm here with uh, Sergey, who is our first Vans uh, kit builder here. So Sergey's from New Jersey. Correct, and uh, um, and we're building a uh, an RV14 here with him, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty neat. Now, a lot of you that follow our channel know that we're uh, the East Coast Sling uh, Build Center and dealer, um, and we we love our slings, but we've always uh, really admired the Vans uh, aircraft, knowing that they're they're wonderful planes, and. Uh, just wanted to 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 branch out and and help some others here in the Northeast that are are interested in building uh, these popular airplanes. Um, so we kind of put our sh out our shingle that we'll uh, we'll build the vans. It was mainly prompted by the uh, the development of the RV15, which I think when that comes around will be a real winner. Um, but you know now that's that's been delayed some. So so I got into vans and uh, and Sergey is our our first customer. So. Sergey, tell me, why did you choose the, uh, the RV-14? Um, Vans has always kind of been a dream for me. Um, just experimental aviation as, as a concept, it's, it's such a like, purely American thing. Like if you can go build something in your garage and go fly it, and it's not like you can just go do this. Um, there's like a whole government structure, um, you know, the regulation. Um, I was always fascinated by it, and uh, it's, uh, I never thought I'd be able to actually do this up until retirement or something, right? That's usually how this happens, um, but uh, I found myself you know, fortunately in a position where I'm able to do this, and I run across you, and um, this made it a possibility to do this for, um, much faster than it would take me by myself. Which we talked about like about a decade long, you know, walk and kids and all of that. Um, so that made it a reality. Um, and um, dance is uh, it's always something that uh, I do. I, I follow a bunch of builders and, um, just by by what it is and by what it can do. Um, and uh, when you read about vans from other people, like what they describe, sounds like marketing content. Um, it's it's really not. Um, I, I would not believe that. Mm -hmm. It's just, I found this very hard to believe um, how they feel, how they fly. Um, but uh, when I actually went and demoed it, um, it was turned out to be completely true. Um, I, I've never been. The Vans grin is real. It's absolutely real. <laughs> um, and it's not even the grin, the grin is the entire experience. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never flown something that felt like I'm wearing it. Um, it's, it's not a, uh, like, you're not flying it. It's just an, and I wouldn't even be able to put my finger on it, like what it is. Um, it's, I think it's it's probably the rigging because they're rigged to be um, the feel. It's it's a tighter um, feel, but it was just like as soon as we took off, and that's it. Like I knew that this was it. Um, and uh, so you chose Vans because you flew it and you just loved it. Uh, right, right. And, and the 14 specifically, um, I don't have a mission per se. Um, we, it's just like not part of my family lifestyle mostly. It's either myself in an airplane or myself with an instructor. So a two-seater uh, made sense. Um, and uh, 
given that it's a tail dragger, like there's more challenge, you can learn more things, um, like you, you can do more with it, and VR14 <laughs> specifically. There's robotics, you can do, um, I've never tried them, but I'm hoping to. Um, yep. you, I can finish my instrument rating. Like it's, it's one airplane that is going to be, you know, as they say, it's three airplanes in one. Um, and uh, so that's how it started, and that's how I'm in it now. Okay. Well, we're happy to have you here. Um, so, uh, so uh, tell us about your avionics panel. What did you go with? Uh, I ended up going with our drives. Um, I was very happy with them. They had a lot of expertise with the fans, and uh, they uh, recently guided me through the design. Um, I'm very happy with the panel, um, the turnaround, everything. Um, and uh, it's a full IFR panel. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying it out. And up and out of the queen. Really nice. And, uh, yeah. It's a dual G3X, right? It's a dual G3X uh, with a GTM 750. Yep. Um, and uh, I, I went back and forth a little bit between uh, electronic emission, like with, with full fuel injection. Um, ended up going a little bit less experimental. Um, the, I went with dual PMAC, which seems to be the most common. Um, scenario. Um, and, you know, like from a purely technical perspective, I would have preferred like some kind of electronic fuel injection system, but um, the um, potentially servicing it, right? This is what made me go towards less um, of the experimental path. Um, a little more standard. A little, a little bit more standard. Most yeah, more mechanics more, can more work on it and be familiar more, with it. Yep. Yeah, more likely to find somebody. Um, All right, and um, autopilot. Um, yeah, it's it's the Garmin. It's the Garmin, 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 Garmin package. Three, three axis, yeah. um, uh, angle of attack, mm -hmm. um, and uh, what else? Like the pilot took like IFR. Yeah, uh, the whole package. Yeah. package right? Yep, yep. And your interior? Uh, the interior I ended up going with. Uh, uh, it's uh, Aero Classics, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Classic Aero. Classic Aero, yes. that's it. Yep. Um, yeah, and the, the, I mean, the beauty about Vans is there are so many options. Um, they've, been, they've been doing this for 50 years, and uh, there are, there's an entire ecosystem around, yeah. around them, and even even picking the, picking the avionics band was a challenge. Um, and uh, for me, that I think most of the timeline that uh, they, um, um, and uh, it's a similar, similar thing with, uh, with the interior. Mm -hmm. There's like three or four vendors that you can go with, and I ended up going with Custom Air. Um, I don't have the interior yet, but that's coming. Working with them, right. Yeah. Um, Next question is, um, you know, anytime somebody's dealing with vans now, they're going to wonder about things like laser cut parts and uh, and especially the uh, the bankruptcy. So when did you uh, when did you actually start uh, placing uh, you know the, the order for your kit? I ordered my Ampanesh kit the day I went back from my, came back from my demo flight. <laughs> you were sold. Yeah, I was sold. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I wanted to have my first order to have the date that exact date yep. like. Nice. There was a delay. Uh, yes, that was end of March of 2023. Yep. Um, their original timeline was pretty aggressive. Like we were supposed to, I ended up ordering the rest of the kits. I think within the next month um, to get the um, engine bundle, and, and there was like mm -hmm. there was some discount. Like there was a, there were incentives to do that, and uh, their original timelines were really aggressive. Like we were supposed to get everything. I think within three yeah. months or so. Um, and, and it didn't take that long. It did not take that long, but because of the laser laser cut parts, um, yeah. the back that everybody's familiar with, everything ended up getting pushed out. Um, my timing ended up being really fortunate. Yeah. Um, so yes, my kits were delayed, um, but the kits themselves had none of the laser cut parts that turned out to be potentially problematic. Yep. Um, we had some that were always laser cut, but none of the structural parts. Yeah. Not, there's nothing to be replaced. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've gone through the, uh, the the service bulletin, and um, there's a lot of things that are on there that say they are potentially laser cut parts, and they are punched uh, with right. with your kit. So right. there's there's a lot of things that we just don't even have to uh, to worry about because your kit is primarily punched parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to be completely honest, like um, I understand that, like I'm speaking from a very different vantage point. That people that do have laser cut parts, yeah. but when I when I watched the two hour engineering video, like I actually went away with uh, um, feeling really good about the whole thing. Like I think the amount of work that they put into um, to showing um, what happens to the parts and how the stress react forms crack form. Um, if I did have laser cut parts in in, in my airplane, 
if they were not if they were difficult to replace, I would just most likely just live with them. Mm -hmm. um, like if it was a quick build kit, right, with like unknown um, laser cut parts in it, um, based on what I've seen and based on what, the research that they've done and their presentation, um, that gave me a lot of confidence um, about laser cut parts themselves. And honestly, the airframe um, also, because this is the only stress kind of like fatigue testing I'm aware of that actually put like airframe lifetime hours mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's like it's nothing to worry about. From, yeah, from what yeah I, I agree. I watched the videos too and uh, uh, came away with a sense of, yeah, maybe not as bad as a lot of people within the Vans community were kind of thinking initially. Um, yeah, everybody's got to make their own choices right. with their airplane, but uh, yeah, we, we are fortunate. Your build is uh, um, is really, it's not going to be delayed or, or anything like that. We're in, a, we're in a pretty good spot. And now where are you with your kit orders and of course with the uh, the bankruptcy and everything? So we, uh, I have all of my kits in place in, on hand with the exception of the finish kit. Um, and uh, I have reordered the finishing kit, but I don't have a timeline yet. And you had a 50% deposit on it, right? To the, uh, so, Yes. Uh, it's, so the finishing kit is a little bit strange because some of the parts got moved from the finishing. The fuselage, like the, like the brakes and the wheels mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so finishing kit was one that did not see um, a lot of the increase. Um, but yes, like there was an increase in, in that one kit, um, but everything else was already paid and delivered. So like the timing worked out there for me. Um, the prop and the engine, I have just reordered as well, and just in my timeline, but I ended up think, uh, paying 8% extra for the engine, and like 6% something for the prop. Mm -hmm. um, so it stinks, but obviously yeah. we've been expecting worse. Yeah, yeah, it's better than better than nothing. <laughs> yeah. Better than if they had gone chapter seven or something oh, yeah. like that. So yeah. so, so yeah. Fear. Um, I, I managed to get them on the phone a few times, like, there is, like, like I've ordered things and they've shipped it, so like it's, they're moving, they're moving on. Like I, I actually, I have a lot of confidence that they will get back in track and things will become back to normal or likely even better. Um, because like the kind so. of wake up call for them, it's a good thing to go yep. and survive through. Yep. Yeah, so um, just an, uh, an update now as to kind of where we're at. We're, uh, we're getting to the end of your empennage. Uh, stuff here. We've got uh, rudder finished today, um, and um, your horizontal finished today. Um, so it's been a uh, successful visit, and uh, just uh, elevator skins for the uh, for the most part. And uh, we've been prepping his uh, aft fuselage. Um, uh, he's getting that ready. Um, you can see behind me here uh, his horizontal, and um, uh, we're doing something. You know, I don't know if it's really different. There's 11 or 12,000 of these planes, but we're probably not the uh, the first by any means. But uh, um, we're not priming uh, this airplane. We're uh, etching and alodyning um, the majority of the uh, the airplane. Um, and the main reason is because we can. Um, because of my sling building, where we do etching and alodyning um, of those, um, I have the equipment. I have the um, uh, the, the tanks and the, the different things here. So uh, uh, Sergey decided to, uh, to go with the, um, uh, the, the alodyne process for his corrosion treatment. So that's, um, that's why if you see some of these parts and they're, they're gold uh, versus uh, being primed on the inside, that's, uh, that's what it is. And this is fairly rare in the whole build world. Like I've seen a lot of people talk about, like I would honestly do this if I could, but the toxicity and yeah. the difficulty of dealing with this, um, that's, you don't, you don't see a lot of this and I can see why, like I would not be doing this in my yeah. garage, but, but having this facility here, that is a big advantage. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Being yeah, being able to handle the, the, uh, the chemicals is, uh, mm -hmm. is one of the, the, uh, the big things. Yep. Right. Yep. All right. Um, and so, you know, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep moving forward with his whole project. It's nice. Sergey lives about uh, three hours or so away. So he's yep. able to, uh, to, to drive here and, uh, and, and build with us. And uh, Caleb, who just left, so you don't see him in the videos, has been kind of working with him uh, hand in hand on the uh, the whole project and doing a uh, a very nice job with uh, uh, kind of overseeing things and uh, uh, keeping Sergey on track. So um, so we're really enjoying it. Now, if you watch my channel, you'll see I'm starting to put out some videos on, uh, and I have more coming on the differences. They're not going to be real long uh, videos, but they're the, the differences between the um, the Vans build that we're doing here and the sling. 
Um, there are a lot of differences. I wouldn't say that we have a whole lot of pros and cons. They're just different. It's not really one better than the other, um, but there are some, some uh, interesting things be behind uh, how the planes are constructed. There's some things with the manuals that are different. Um, and uh, so I'm just gonna point those things out if somebody's interested in, in one or the other and, and just kind of go through the, 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 the differences between the, uh, the two airplanes because I think uh, the community will, will find that kind of uh, interesting. Um, all right, well, it's a pleasure working with you. We're looking forward to uh, building a, a, a great airplane here. And uh, thanks for doing this video. Sure. So uh, please like this video if you haven't and follow along, uh, subscribe. It helps uh, my channel grow and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.